computing devices and operating systems are, are tools. So the first thing that we needed was an understanding of tools. Our ancestors started to understand and use tools about five million years ago. The other thing we need if we're going to build anything as complex as an operating system, we need ways of working in large groups. Today, one person sort of can build an operating system. And uh, you brought up Linus Torvalds building one. Um, but certainly, to build one from scratch in the beginning required uh, a large team. And at least for Android to happen, you needed altruism. And it seems like the, our ancestors, at least five million years ago, had, had signs of altruism. You needed people to be willing to do things to benefit the, the whole in some way more than just benefiting themselves. The next really big breakthrough was developing language. In order to build complex things like operating systems, humans needed to be able to communicate, be able to write things down, be able to keep track of things. This is probably the most speculative part of the story is, is when that breakthrough that enabled humans to have language happened. The best current theory is it was this mutation of the FOXP2 gene that happened about 300,000 years ago that somehow enabled human brains to understand recursive language. So lots of creatures that didn't get that mutation can understand language, including the, the chimpanzees, where they can learn a small vocabulary and match words and even put a, a few words together. In order to have recursive language, it seems like this is something that only humans can do, that we can have rules like this that give us so much more power. Why, why does having recursive language make us so much more powerful? What property you all, if we can only do non-recursive languages, how many different things can we say? That w without this, there's a finite number of things you can say. Right? Once you've got a recursive language with a small set of symbols, a small vocabulary, a small starting point, you can say infinitely many things. So this is very powerful. This was you know, definitely a necessary step to advance thought and building complex systems. So now we'll jump ahead another 300,000 years or so to what I think is the next important step, which came from uh, this guy. Does anyone speak German well enough to pronounce his name correctly? No German speakers. Well, then I guess I can butcher it, and no one will know that I'm doing badly. Um, so Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who you may be familiar with as sort of one of the inventors of calculus competing with Newton for what notation ends up getting used. But what he did that was a lot more important was actually have the idea of universal computation. So around this time and even before, there were computing machines. People like Pascal were building uh, machines to do computing. Um, a little before this time, and building machines that could do all the arithmetic operations. So they had mechanical computers that could do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What Leibniz's key insight was, was that you could actually do general computation this way. So here's one of his quotes from this time that we can have a general method in which all truths of reason would be reduced to a kind of calculation. So he's making this leap to think we can use mechanical calculators to do logic, to do things other than just arithmetic. And at the same time, this would be some sort of universal language, so something that you can express anything you want in it. And it would be different from all those previously because all of those things would be manipulated with these symbols and words so he was really jumping to this idea of having a universal computer that could compute anything. And I should point out that I should be able to say, say his name better than I do because I'm a very close relative, at least academically, of him. He is my uh, academic great, 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 something or other uh, grandparent. And academic generations happen quicker than biological generations. Um, and it's a pretty small community. So uh, almost everyone is connected to, to such, either one side or the other of this, this picture. Um, we're almost there, right? We've got from the Big Bang to language to working in teams to the idea of programmable machines that can do anything. You're know, really probably 99.999 some percent of the way to getting Android. All that's left is the practical problems, right? So intellectually, we're most of the, the way there. What we don't have is machines that can actually work efficiently and at the scale that we need to do something like Android.